All right. Welcome back to Will Builds. In this episode, uh, we're going to be going through an assignment that uh, I'm actually prescribing for all of my SOLIDWORKS students at Ohio State. Um, this assignment has to do with modeling a clock and then using a key shot to animate this clock uh, in some interesting way. Maybe it's second hand, maybe it's showing the hours moving, uh, maybe we go through camera motions too. Uh, so what I'm hoping to do is spend about 45 minutes or so going through how I would build this clock. Uh, normally my examples, I like to be kind of like design icons. This is clearly not the most iconic design, although you've probably seen a clock just like this in someone's house. Um, this is just the one that we had up. So I'll go through my build process with that. It should be a pretty straightforward build. Um, and then uh, I'll go through the process of importing it into KeyShot, um, getting things sort of set up, and uh, actually making the animation. There's a good chance that the first video, 45 minutes, will focus on building, and the second half, or probably a second video, will focus on the animation side of things in KeyShot. Um, what I anticipate having to do is um, building most of this in SOLIDWORKS and then using a secondary graphics program to, to actually do the, uh, the graphics, like the, the face, um, with all the numbers and stuff like that. Um, and I, I haven't prepared any, any of this ahead of time. So you'll see I'll probably use my phone and take a picture and port it into Illustrator and just go through the entire unfiltered process for you guys. Um, OK, so the way I usually like to start this stuff is um, by thinking about how I'm going to go about this build process first on paper, and then uh, actually going through the build process uh, in SOLIDWORKS. So uh, you, are, you guys are going to see this sort of upside down. Um, this clock is round, and so I think I can probably build most of this as a cross-section that I then revolve. So it looks like I'm going to have some sort of wooden cross-section. I'm not entirely sure what the shape is there. Um, there looks like there's some sort of like metallic bezel and then some sort of like domed piece of glass. I'm going to sort of mock up where my axis of revolution is. You guys can kind of see that. And let me just sort of map out what this could look like once I revolve, um, something like this. I'll sort of shade in where the glass is, shade in where I think the wood profile would be. All right, and it looks like there's also the face which is pretty flat. And then near the middle here, I have what looks like are the pieces that hold the second hand and the minute hands, and they fit underneath the glass. So i got to make sure those get in there, too. Okay. So chances are I'm, I'm going to do most of this in a single sketch and then revolve each part as a separate feature. So I don't know if you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. You can kind of see the wooden part of the clock right here um, in section, a little metal bezel, the glass part of the clock, um, the face of the clock, and there is a back to this clock too. I don't know if you guys can see that. So right, um, like wooden part, metallic bezel, the glass, the face is what has the numbers on it, and if I turn this over I've got some other pieces on the back. Now, this is an aesthetic model. I'm not going to model anything on the inside. Nothing I wouldn't see from the outside of this clock. Um, that's sort of what the assignment is. So I guess in my section view, I could probably plot out like the back of this clock as part of this revolve. And then probably as a secondary part, I'll, I'll build in this like back piece that houses the batteries. So that's probably going to be some sort of like extrude um, with some chamfering. Um, these are all going to be revolves. 
And um, one concept that we're going to start talking about more and more as I model this stuff is uh, the concept of a master sketch. So putting as much of the information about the part uh, that I can measure in a single sketch and then using that sketch multiple times to create parts in SOLIDWORKS. Um, what that will allow us to do is be a lot more flexible with making adjustments in measurements and stuff like that. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to my display cam here and uh, open up SOLIDWORKS. Um, this is a student edition because I'm teaching a class of SOLIDWORKS 2016-2017. And I'm going to start by creating a new part. Um, yeah, I will probably build this because it is an aesthetic model as a multi-body part. So everything's going to happen in this one part file even though I have multiple bodies. A different body for like the wooden area, um, the metal bezel, the glass piece, the hands, all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, so if I want the front plane to be sort of looking at the front of the clock, I will probably do my um, sketching, my section sketching on the right plane. Not a huge, hugely important thing. Um, and I'm also going to start with some basic geometry sort of setting this up. So first thing, and let me switch my camera to the desk cam again. I'm going to try and get a measurement of from the middle of my clock all the way to the outside. Um, it would probably be easier to measure all the way across and divide it by two, but my calipers don't actually open that wide. Uh, so let's see here. It's just about as wide as my calipers go. It's about 150 millimeters. And um, that it's going to allow me to kind of set up some basic framework here for me to start working within. So about 150 centimeters from middle to the outside of my clock, um, sorry, millimeters. The other way I can dimension this, if I had taken the dimension of the entire clock face, I can actually dimension across that center line and just put in 300 millimeters. Either way it works. All right, now I'm going to start to sketch in some of these parts that you saw me sketch out on paper. Um, and meanwhile, I'm going to, I think you guys can kind of see, yeah, okay. You can kind of see my desk as I'm doing this. I'll try and hold this in a way that I can like point and say what I'm measuring. Um, but I'm also looking at, I only see on my screen what is on my screen, none of these cameras. Okay, first things first, I'm going to probably start with a rough shape for this wooden part and um, those of you who have had me in class know uh, I usually like to just mock stuff up close and then worry about doing like a final dimension. Um, I could build this as curves, I could also build it as like rectilinear parts and then add fillets. That might give me some more control so let's just do that for speed. So it looks like my part Steps up, jumps in, has a big round area, and then has another similar step for the wooden part here. Uh, okay, and I'm actually going to convert that reference to um, construction geometry just so I don't accidentally use it. Actually, you know, it doesn't matter. We're using a master sketch. Okay, so let's take some measurements here. I'll start to get this a little bit closer. Um, I'm going to measure the thickness of some of these wooden parts with my calipers. Looks like we've got about 12, 21, okay. So from here to the back of the clock is about 12 millimeters. From the back of the clock to the very tippy top of that is about, what did I say, 21? I already forgot. Yeah, it's about 21 millimeters. Uh, it looks like this is pretty symmetrical. So I'm going to line these suckers up by making them... I'm holding shift, clicking them both to add a relation that makes them collinear. And now I'm going to get a couple widths as well. So I might actually use the depth gauge here. It's about 
5.7, then about 25 across. So let's see, from here to here, uh, about 5.7, all the way across here, it's about 25 millimeters. And again, that looks pretty symmetrical. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that that and that should be equal, adding a relation there. OK, before I start building the rest of this, let me explain to you guys pretty quickly the idea of a master sketch. Um, I'm, I just exited the sketch. I'm going to slow click on there twice and call this master sketch. Um, or like I'll say masker section sketch because I'm drawing section geometry. I'm going to save my part um, so I don't lose it. Oops. All right, I'll throw it in my little builds clock animation. This is my clock. Sure. Okay. So the theory behind a master sketch is. I'm going to put a bunch of things into a master sketch. And then when I'm ready to start building features, um, like bosses and revolves, what I'll do is I'll create a brand new sketch on a shared plane, in this case the right plane. I'm going to use the Convert Entities tool up here to pick a bunch of geometry that I need to make the feature I'm trying to make. In this case, the wooden outside of my clock. All right, I might have to trim some of these lines down. That's fine. Um, I will probably also probably also have to convert this center line and make it construction because it's not actually part of the geometry of this thing. It's just reference geometry. And then I'm going to use this like I normally would to create my revolve, for example. And look, SolidWorks already knew what I was trying to do. It picked my my axis of revolution and my sketch. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And you can see that this is sort of the outside bezel uh, of my clock. You'll also see that my master sketch is still there. And if I click on it, I can easily see and change dimensions if I decide later I need to make it a change. And you'll notice that because I converted all of these master sketch entities onto the sketch I used in my revolve, that any change I make in the master sketch changes in those converted sketches. Um, this makes a master sketch super powerful because you can see um, more than just one feature's worth of lines in a single sketch, and you have flexibility later on to adjust your part. It does take a little more planning ahead of time, and this is one of the reasons why I've had you guys try and sketch out your build process beforehand, um, because Sometimes you can work yourself into a corner if you're putting too many things in one sketch. Um, but this is a good project to, to start using a master sketch. OK, well, that's not all I need uh, for, this, for this clock. I'm going to put more things in my master sketch. So I'm going to go back in here, continue editing my master sketch, use my favorite little normal two button, square up my sketch, and start building in some of these other features. Uh, so one of those features is <coughs> this metallic bezel. And I'm going to try and see if I can get a couple key measurements here to place this. All right, so it's about three millimeters from the inside of my wooden part, and it's about seven millimeters wide. OK, so I'm going to just start sketching in some of these details. And it is sheet metal. I might go ahead and give this some thickness and then estimate what the actual thickness is. I am trying to be careful that as I'm building these lines, I, it looks like this is a kind of a right angle in here. So I'm trying to make sure those relations form as I'm building out my lines. I'm going to set these two lines equal, so it's a nice equal thickness part. And then the two dimensions that I have right now are from the inside of my wooden bezel to the outside of my, my metal bezel, it's about three millimeters. And um, this thing is about, what did I say, seven millimeters wide. 
Uh, okay. Now, again, I know it would be easy to critique my, my theory behind mentioning this stuff. Um, this is not proper, um, like, engineering or drafting dimensioning. That's not the point right now. The point right now is to quickly build this object and make a 3D animation for um, communicating an idea. And that's not always, it's not always necessary to do super proper dimensioning. Um, now, I could try and take this clock apart and get more of a, an official dimension on the thickness of that metallic bezel. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now because I can probably take a pretty good estimate. I have a feeling this is not more than about a millimeter thick. Uh, it could, it's potentially even less than a millimeter thick. Uh, and I can also tell about how far this thing sticks up off the glass, three millimeters, and how far it sticks down past the glass, about four and a half. Okay, so from here to here, about three millimeters, and from here to here, about four and a half. Nope. Um, let's see. I'm actually going to delete that dimension really quick. And it gave me an error when I added it. It said I was over constraining things. So I'm going to actually, it looks like the only thing constraining, not constraining this little angle is how far, uh, I guess, off the back of my pocket is. So let me just take that dimension instead. Actually, I might try and take a dimension. That's actually kind of a tricky thing to dimension. I'm going to try and get a dimension of how far down the peak of this metallic thing is from the peak of my wooden thing. And I guess I'm going to try and do that with an extra tool. I'm going to use my phone. All right, so I'm going to set my phone across here. It looks pretty flat. Um, the dimension from the top of my phone to the top of the wooden part is 7 millimeters. The distance from the top of my phone to the top of the metallic part is 14 millimeters. So the difference between those two should give me the dimension I'm looking for. And that would be, oops, 7 millimeters. There we go. All right, thank you, iPhone. What else needs to be constrained here? Oh, it looks like, all right, that can kind of move around. Let's get another dimension in here. From the peak to the peak is about 24 and a half millimeters. So I'm going to put a the point at the midpoint at the peak of my wooden part and dimension peak to peak. Yeah, 24 and a half millimeters. There we go. Okay, now we've got that metal thing in place. That took a lot of dimensions, but I want to try and get it pretty accurate. Um, all right, so that's another part. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I'm going to save. And I'm going to go ahead and use my master sketch and just see if when I do this revolve, things are looking right. So I'm going to start a new sketch on the same plane as my master sketch, my right plane. Convert all of the entities here that comprise this little metallic bezel. Okay. Um, also going to convert go back to my sketch pane, convert this uh, reference geometry I need to form my revolve. Go to features, create a revolve. It looks like it selected everything. I'm going to say okay. And there we go. We're getting somewhere. I've got my metallic bezel, I've got my wooden part, I'm going to save. Okay, good. Alright, back to the master sketch. Let's add some more things. Alright, we've got... We have some glass. We've got a nice big glass dome. And I guess I can start by just sort of building that in place. Um, it goes from underneath the bezel all the way to the middle of my clock. And importantly, 
um, so I don't have like a point sticking out the middle of my clock face, I'm going to make sure that it's tangent where we're going to revolve. Let's go ahead and add a tangent relationship there. Um, now if I hold this thing sideways, wow, the glass actually sticks out higher than, the, the top of the glass is actually higher than the, the top of my wooden part here. And I think that's probably something I can measure. Um, that's going to be tricky too. So I might just estimate it for now. It looks like it could be, I would do like a little visual estimation here. Probably not more than like four or five millimeters. So from the top of the wood to the top of my glass is only about four to five millimeters. I'll just say four and a half millimeters, sure. Um, we're going to put this in here. It's, it's hidden. I have a feeling, because I have taken some clocks be apart in the past, that um, it's actually got a little bead around the outside of the glass. So I am going to give this a little bit of thickness. I'm going to do a little offset. I don't know how thick the glass is. That's something, if I took this apart, I could measure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's probably only about two and a half, maybe three millimeters thick. I'm going to say okay. Okay. Um, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to make those two guys coincident. And then I am going to build in a little. I don't know, I guess it could be a circle. It's something that like holds this thing in place. Um, the glass probably does have some sort of like rounded edge underneath this bezel to hold it in place. Because this is an aesthetic model, I'm not too worried about it. Um, another thing I'm not too worried about because this is a master sketch, I'm not going to actually trim the edge of this line here, uh, and you'll see why when I convert all of this over. What else doesn't it like? Oh, how big is this supposed to be? <laughs> um, well, there's probably wood inside this as well. So for now, I'm just going to give it an arbitrary dimension of some some nice round number. Um, usually, if I don't, if I didn't measure something, I'll put like a 0.99 in the dimension just to remind myself that, oh, that's not actually something I measured, but it is something I purposefully dimensioned. Okay, so let's get out of this. I'm going to save again. Save all the time. Make another sketch on my right plane, the shared plane with my master sketch. Uh, I'm going to start converting a bunch of entities for my glass part. Okay. Now is a good time to make that trim, like that. Um, I also want to trim, so I have one nice simple profile for my glass. Let's go ahead and revolve this. It needs an axis. I'm just going to pick that line down there. Make sure I'm not merging anything, because when I bring this into key shot, I want to make sure they're all different bodies. And there's the glass part. Now, if it bothers you, like it bothers me that that thing is um, not transparent, uh, I can actually change the transparency of that without actually applying the material. It's kind of a nice way to do things. Uh, okay, so I've got my metal piece, I have my glass piece, um, I have my wood piece. No, it's not rounded yet, but we'll get there. And let's see, I have a couple more parts. I've got a clock face. And like the, the wood the wood that comprises the back of this clock. Okay, so let's go back. I'm gonna save, we'll go back to that master sketch, square up again. Um, I'm gonna build in, and it looks it really does look flat to me. So I'm gonna build in a um, two things. I'm gonna build in like a wooden back. And if I look closely, you guys can't see it so well. 
Um, but it looks like there's a wooden piece that comes up to about here, drops down, and it must do something going across the back here. There's obviously some sort of hole in the middle that holds my like clock hands in place. Again, aesthetic model. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, those are coincident. Um, so I'm just going to pick something kind of arbitrary. So, sure. Oh, again, if it's arbitrary, I didn't measure it. Um, maybe I'm going to say 3.99 instead of 4. Okay. Uh, this piece of wood does leave kind of a channel. Actually, it's a pretty deep channel. So maybe it comes all the way down here like that. And I'm just going to make sure these guys are linear. Anytime I'm like clicking multiple components and you see that there's a contextual menu that pops up with a bunch of um, options for relations. I'm, I'm holding shift to pick two different parts or three different parts and add that relation. Okay, and then I am going to just go ahead so it's not a blue line. I'm going to make these tangents so everything's fully constrained. Um, okay, so that's sort of like a wooden part that fills up the back of my clock. And now I need to make a face. Actually, in looking at this a little more closely, it it looks like it's it's kind of a label, like maybe that's a graphic piece that was sort of glued onto my clock face. So maybe I will make a slightly different part here that does something like, how far in is that? Looks like it's maybe only about four millimeters in. So it's gonna start here, like, uh, I don't, yeah, I guess that's fine. I can do a three-point arc. Something like that. And then it is... It really does look flat to me. So I'm just going to use a straight line. It goes all the way to the middle. Um, I do want to make that tangent. I measured from the inside of my bezel to the outside of that as four millimeters and that is not very wide either. It's probably it's probably about the same four millimeters. Okay. Why is this still blue? Oh how far is it sticking out? Yeah it's not sticking out that far. Not a number that I measured, but it can't be much more than a millimeter, so 0.99. Okay. All right, so that's that's a good deal of other stuff. Let me save, um, make a few more features using those parts of my master sketch. So I'm going to convert entities for the back, and you'll notice that some of these parts actually share lines, and that's okay. That's another good thing about a master sketch. Um, you can always trim the lines in your converted sketch to, to make your part exactly what it needs to be. And if these lines change in the master sketch, everything will stay nice and coincident. So let's go ahead and do a revolve for the back of the clock. What line do I want to use? Sure, I don't want it to merge. OK, so that's the back of my clock. Um, save, make another sketch um, for what effectively is the face of the clock. Okay, I'm going to have to trim some parts of this from the top. So I have a nice closed loop. Turn this into a revolve. Make sure I pick my line. Okay, I don't want to merge it. Okay, and you can kind of see how that looks. It just gave me a slightly raised surface for me to put the graphics on. All right, so that's that's actually most of the clock. Um, I don't think my animation is going to show the back, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, I am going to add a few fillets in here, and then we're going to do the graphics and the hands. Oh, I got to do hands too. Okay, so um, it definitely needs some fillets on this guy. 
Uh, I'm going to try a nice full round fillet on the front face of this. No, it doesn't like it. Oh, crud. Alright, we'll try a face fillet. Clear selections. From here to here. Um, probably asymmetric. I want that to go to the middle of my part here. So I'm just going to play with these numbers until they're close. I forget what that was. I could probably look at my master sketch. <clears throat> it's like 25 or something. 21. Alright. Say okay to that. Fill it on the other side. Here. Another asymmetric one. fillets to do. I, I'm doing these as face fillets because they are kind of weird curves and I'm, I'm kind of eyeballing what's actually happening here to what we see on this side. Um, this is probably only like four and yeah, probably not even that much. Now I am going to add some little fillets inside here, like 1.5 millimeters. Um, for the most part, all these things look better with some cosmetic fillets in, in the gaps and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Save. Um, this guy probably needs the fillets. There, it looks pretty sharp, so that's probably only about a half millimeter. Maybe a one millimeter fillet. It's fine. And um, I do want to fillet those edges too. Completely sharp edges in a part, especially in a rendering, always look weird. So I try to add some cosmetic fillets after I have my main geometry done. Okay, that's probably good for anything that you're going to see. Let me save. And to make this easier to look at, I am going to add just a little bit of color to some of this stuff. Is that the back? Okay. Sure. Um, we'll go with like, yep, it's brown. And that is what, the face? So we'll make the face white for now. This is the exterior. It's also kind of brown. And we've got that bezel, which is like a bright gold, for lack of a better color. I'll just use yellow. OK. And the glass is still on there. Save. All right, we've got a good start on this clock. Um, I'm going to check how we're doing on time. Only like half an hour in. Okay, so the next thing, and let me save again, 
is um, building not only like the graphics for the face, but also the shapes for the hands. And probably a good way to do this is to take a photo and then build this stuff uh, using reference in Illustrator. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. So let me switch over to, uh, where are we? Desk, desk cap. I think it's supposed to say desk cam. You can watch me take a picture of my <laughs> clock. It doesn't need to be fancy. It does need to have like a still version of all the hands to try and catch that second hand in between. And now I'm just going to go ahead and like email myself that photo. Super low tech. There's the photo. Yep. Send that to me. Via mail to myself. Send. Yeah, actual size is fine. Okay. Yay, smartphones. So now I'm going to go to my email. And I'm going to go back to the title here really quick. So y'all don't see all my personal email. Download this image. And just save it as like clock face image. That's fine. Get rid of the email. OK, so I'm going to switch back to my display. And um, so I'm going to open up Adobe Illustrator. If you guys don't have Illustrator, um, any like vector program would work. Uh, I'm going to start a new artboard. It really doesn't matter. I like to make sure things are in the same units that I'm using in my my build. And we know this thing is like 300 millimeters about in in size. So sure, I'll make an artboard that's roughly those that that size. Or Illustrator will just quit on me. That's fine. Let's try this again. <laughs> okay. Millimeters, three hundred, three hundred. Okay, that's better. No, this isn't really a class on Illustrator. Um, but you will kind of see my process. I like to make sure like the rulers are on my artboard. I can see the grid and everything. I'm going to go ahead and import um, my image or like place it. Where is that place? An image. Oh, that's a totally different project. Go down to little build stuff, clock animation. That's where I saved that image. Set it down. I'm going to scale it to something that's like kind of the right size, or at least get it close, rotate it around. Um, now, if you want to get really technical, um, my camera probably does warp the dimensions of this a little bit. Um, but what I'm going to do is use a reference. So on the clock in front of me, I'm going to measure. Let's say I'm just going to measure the length of my hour hand from the middle, the center of it, all the way to the edge is 93 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box, like a box that has some obnoxious color, um, and just uh, probably get rid of the stroke, and then now that I've made this box, I'm actually going to force it to be the same 93 millimeters tall as my um, hour hand is supposed to be. Oops. I'm going to... 93 millimeters. There we go. Okay. So, now what I'm going to do is, well, let's say I'm going to rotate this around since so it's about the same angle 
as my clock. And I'm going to use it as a reference to scale my image to the right size. I'm actually pretty close. So I'm going to scale my image down until that pink line, which is the right dimension, because I dimensioned it in Illustrator, is exactly the same size as it appears on the clock. And that's actually pretty darn close. You can see the middle of the hour hand all the way to the tip is 93 millimeters. Um, when this is actually you know, straight up and down, it should say, yeah, my height is 93 millimeters. Okay. Oops. All right, so I'm going to get rid of that. Now I know all of the graphics on this image are scaled the right, the right way for me to actually use some geometry. Um, so I'm going to save this really quick as like clock face graphics. And there are a couple things I can build in Illustrator. One would be uh, the actual clock hands shape. Um, I'm pretty decent with the pen tool. I, I like using the pen tool. So I'm going to just start with that and sort of trace out the shape of this hour hand so that it's pretty darn close to what it's supposed to be. And it goes all the way to the tip here. Okay, so that's half of it. Um, now I could actually probably just mirror this over. So that's that's actually what I'm going to do. So let's see, I'm going to rotate this whole thing around my central point right here. So it's in its like 12 o'clock position. That's good. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in place. I'm going to reflect it across the vertical. And then I'm going to move this over so that they touch and I'm going to rotate from the top anchor here until this thing is about right. Okay, it's actually looking pretty close. Um, it looks like it might be a little thick. Uh, I'm going to use a tool I like here uh, Shift M is like the shape builder tool. I'm going to combine these things together to make a single shape. And yeah, it looks like that worked. And then I might have to scale this so it's a little bit thinner. It looks like the real hand is a little thinner. All right, so you can build your hands any way you want, tracing them, whatever. Um, that's pretty close. Let's just test it. I'm going to rotate it back around and see how it lines up. Actually, that's pretty good. Nice. Okay. So that's a clock hand. We're going to be able to use this geometry in SolidWorks. Um, I'm probably going to try and use the same. I'm going to hold Alt while I drag, like rotate this around. Um, it'll make a copy of it. I'm going to see if I can just like warp this thing into the right shape for Oh, I said hour hand before, minute hand. This is the hour hand. All right, make it a little wider. It's actually pretty close. I might bring these guys, scale them like toward the middle here, just a little bit. Hmm. 
It's actually pretty close. So I've got my hour hand, I've got my minute hand. Um, I will use those. Now all I need is my second hand. So I'm going to do another. Trace chop here. This one's actually really simple. I might just be able to use this as like an outline. I actually build it in SolidWorks. So I'm not going to try and trace this like super accurately. At least I'll get a pretty accurate dimension from this. Okay. So I've got my hour, minute, and second hand. And I go, oops, let me rotate this in the middle here. So they're all kind of facing up. All right, I'm just going to move all of them over here for now. Save. They are kind of weird shapes. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I have to eventually make an image that I can use for the face here. Because I'm focusing on the build process, um, that's going to come in more with the rendering so I, I might come back to this part of it, but these are super useful. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to save really quick. I'm going to delete that, bring these guys over, and I'm actually going to export. Uh, no, I'm going to save a copy of this. Just kidding, not save a copy. We'll try to export. Export as a file format that SOLIDWORKS likes. DWG and DXF are both good. I'm just going to go with DWG. Clock face graphics, that's fine. I'll export it. <coughs> say my scale of one millimeter is one unit, that's true. The color doesn't matter. I'm going to say OK. And then I am going to undo to get my picture back and then save this as like my Illustrator file. All right, I'm just going to minimize that. We're going to go back to SOLIDWORKS. All right, so, so far, all of our master sketch has been on the right plane. Um, but I can't really sketch my hands from the right plane. I'm actually going to sketch them looking at the clock. So I'm going to start a brand new sketch um, on the front plane. And I'm going to insert. Oh, just kidding. Hold on. Get out of that sketch. Discard the changes. Before starting a sketch, because I'm going to insert a, uh, a DXF as a reference. I'm going to pick the plane I want to sketch on, go up to Insert, scroll down to DXF or DWG, that's the file we just saved from Illustrator, and then go find that file. I'll build stuff, clock animation, where did it go? Oh, if it's not showing up, make sure that DWG file is available. Um, it, it likes either one. Um, import it as a 2D sketch. Next. Just make sure the units all match. So we made it in millimeters, we saved it in millimeters, our files in millimeters, so make sure it comes in as millimeters. There's a preview of what it's importing. Um, usually you don't have to change anything else, so I'm just going to not change anything, say finish. And there are my lines. I'm going to close this little box that popped up. Cool. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is for each one of these, I'm going to highlight it and then use this little pop-up thing that, said, that says make block. I'm going to make a block. And what that does is it like forever keeps these lines together so that even if I move them, they're not going to like separate or change dimensions. I know that they're accurate. So I'm going to do that for each one of these parts. And this one is only going to be a reference, but I still want to make a block. 
Um, if that contextual mesh menu like disappears on you, you can always right click and say make a block. Okay, here we go. And we're effectively going to be making a front plane master sketch. So I'm going to bring all these over. I'm going to use my favorite button, normal 2. I'm looking at the back. I want to look at the front, so I'll just hit it again. And we know that the center, because we set it up this way, the center axis for my revolve is also the center of the, the clock. So I'm going to start by putting a little circle in there that is about the size of, uh, I guess, the circle that you see the clock hands make. Looks like it's about 9 millimeters. All right, yeah, nine millimeters. Good. Then I'm going to move each of these guys so that it intersects. And this should actually be something you can make coincident. Actually, I'm going to create a vertical like center line here, just so I'm not dimensioning things to that other master sketch. I'm going to say that center line. Wow, it's really hard to see this sketch on the gray background, so I'm going to flip it around again. That center line should be even with a point here. Yeah, good. Okay. And I can probably just move this around so it's about the right position. Okay. So there's my hour hand. I'm going to do the same thing for my minute hand. Make the top coincident. Um, line up the bottoms. Okay, and then uh, I've got a second hand as well. And this thing I'm only going to use as a reference because it was really um, kind of like weird dimensions. It's very rectilinear. If you look at it, it's basically a rectangle. So I'm just going to build this one by hand and make it as close to the, the right size as I can. I am going to make sure the midpoint of that line is right on my center line here. Yep. And I need another box for Maybe I'll use one, two, three, or middle one. No, we'll go this way. There are a couple ways to make a box. I just want to make it easy for myself to make this box about the right length. That second hand is like exactly the same length as that. And the width is quite a bit smaller. So I'll try like 1.5. Maybe even less. 1.25. Make sure the center point of that is coincident. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it blue for now, and I'm actually going to delete this reference geometry. Let me get. Uh, actually, the top of my second hand is a slightly smaller brass fixin. It's like eight millimeters. So I'm going to throw another circle in here. Eight millimeters. Okay. All right. Let me get out of this. So all of those are sketched on the front plane. I'm going to save. I'm also going to name this sketch Master Front Sketch. Okay. Um, also, maybe just to clean things up a little bit, all of these fillets, you know what? I'm going to actually move all of this stuff, all of my revolve pieces, into a folder. I right clicked while they were highlighted, add to folder, and I'm just going to say revolve features. It's just easier for me to navigate everything that's happening in my feature tree that way. 
And I could probably name these things too, like that is the glass. Um, usually don't name things until you know you're done altering the geometry. Because if you um, do another operation to one of these parts, um, you'll have to change the name again. Is that how you spell bezel? That looks weird. Save. Alright, so let's make some hands. And I might do something here in my master sketch that's going to help out. So, if you look from the side here, these hands are sort of standing off from the surface of the face of my clock. So I'm going to go back to my master sketch, edit it, and I'm going to actually build in where I think these hands should go. Um, interesting. So there's like a... I'm just going to build a couple boxes. There's like a, a screw that stands everything off of the face. Then there's a little spacer. Oops. Let me undo that. I want lines. There's a spacer. Then there's the first hand. It actually goes around that spacer. It is very thin. So I'm kind of drawing my hands in section. If you can, you can see what's going on. There's another spacer that's a little bit thinner for the minute hand, and the minute hand goes around that. And then sitting on top of everything is my second hand. And my second hand actually kind of like comes out from here, and then it has like a dome on the top of it, which is actually kind of neat. So again, I, I like to kind of sketch in what I'm seeing first before I dimension stuff. Um, of course, I try to make a good guess at the size of some of these things. And then all right, there are a few things that I do know the dimension. Well, one, I want the hour and minute hand like circular areas to be the same size, so I'll make these collinear, and they're the same thickness because we're looking at a section view, so I'm going to make them equal. Um, and probably the thickness of the second hand is about the same too, so I'll do that. Um, Alright, now I have some more estimation because I have glass on top of here. So it looks like that is about Oh, wow, I'm going to have to move some things out. Well, that is about two millimeters thick. So let me move this guy up. The next one, this is probably about like five millimeters tall. Yeah, we're going to have to move a bunch of this stuff. I don't know, go ahead and give these a dimension of like, they're pretty thin, like 0.5. It's the minute and second hands. I'm sorry, hour and minute hands. That thing got all messed up. You know what, I might just have to rebuild it. Okay, that one is about the same. No 
controller, like five millimeter standoff. These are nine millimeters. That is eight millimeters. Those are like the, the size of the circle. And those I know are just like hand pressed into place. So I'm just going to space them in a way that looks pretty close to how they're spaced. This looks like it's sitting actually pretty far down. It's about like that. Okay, if this is not making sense to you, um, what exactly I'm building, it should make sense here in a second. So I added all this to the master sketch. Oh, another thing that comes out past everything. And this looks like it's about to here. This one's about to here. Okay, let me get out of here. Let me save everything. All right, I'm going to start building a couple other things here. And these are revolve features. So I might actually go back, like roll back before my last master sketch, my front master sketch. And I'm going to make a few more pieces. So I'm going to sketch in the right plane. I'm going to convert some stuff. Make that a revolve. Make sure it doesn't merge. OK, so that's one piece. I'm going to draw on the right plane. Convert several more entities to make these little standoffs for the hands. Um, notice I'm like picking the same lines over and over again from my master sketch, and that's okay. Ah, all right, let's try this again. Why I didn't like it? There we go. There's another standoff. We're going to do this another time for this other standoff. Trim any pieces that we need. Make a revolve. Make sure it doesn't merge. Okay, we got a couple more. Uh, we've got like the top of the second hand here. Uh, notice I might have to extend some of these lines. Fortunately, the trim tool in SOLIDWORKS, um, if you click and drag starting on a line, it will let you extend lines, not just trim them. Okay, now we've got two more things. Oops, not dimension, convert. Oops, not that line. These lines. Wow, and I could probably make these in the same feature. It'll just be a multi body feature, which is not always the best advice, but that's okay. I'm not going to merge anything. Okay, so now what we have is like our post. We've got where the hour hand is where the minute hand is, where the second hand is, and this is all sitting on the face of the clock. Cool. Um, I am going to just like drag these parts into the folder that says like revolve features just because I want to do that. Uh, I'll roll and save. Okay, so we're close guys. I know we're probably close to an hour too. Oh, we're an hour and four minutes. We're almost to the payoff point here. Uh, okay, so I have my master sketch that has my hands in it. And last but not least, I'm going to use, let's see, I actually want to hide my face. Or not the face, I'm sorry. You want to hide the glass bezel so I can click on these things. Now, the other really cool thing about a master sketch is that 
Um, although, like, my hands are on the front plane, I can actually start a sketch in a parallel plane, like on the plane for this plane for the top of my hour hand, um, sketch on that plane, and convert entities. Oh man, you know what? I am going to hide this face too, just because it's such, it's not a good color. Alright, so I'm sketching on this. If I convert my hour hand lines, I gotta be careful about which ones I'm picking here. Make sure they actually turn into the hour hand. It will actually move those entities to the plane that I'm drawing on, which is awesome. So that means if eventually I want to change like how far off the surface I set this like this whole plane in my other master sketch, like it moves it up and down, this entire sketch will move with it. That is awesome. And I'll, maybe I'll even show you what that looks like. Alright, so I used a little line down here to close this profile. I'm going to make an extruded boss or base. I'm going to, instead of going like a blind, like change how deep this is, I'm going to say go up to a vertex. And I'm going to pick the other side. See that? I picked like the vertex on this this side master sketch so that my hour hand is exactly lined up with where I placed it uh, in my right master sketch. I do want to merge, but I want to make sure that it's only with that circle. And I'm going to green check mark it and see what happens. Okay, so check it out. There's my hour hand. It's a part of that like, circular piece. Wonderful. Let me save. Um, just to make sure, I'm going to uh, change the appearance and make it just make it dark, so you can kind of see. Yeah, pretty cool, right? And if I went back into this master sketch and like drag this around, it should update the position of that entire hand, which is super super powerful. Um, it means your parts can be adjustable without actually like going back and fixing million features. Uh, it's all based on two master sketches, which is awesome. Everything is in the side sketch or this front sketch. Okay, so I'm going to save, do the same thing again for my, I'm going to sketch on this other plane I set up for my minute hand and start converting all of the entities that I need. that. See, and they moved them up to that plane. I'm going to close the profile down at the bottom here. And I'm not really worried about how it lines up with the circle because it's just going to merge. Do another extruded boss base up to a vertex and pick this other vertex here. Yes, I want it to merge. Not with everything, only with that disk. Green check mark. There we go. There's our other hand. Um, I'm going to pick another color, um, not exactly the same color, so you can see the difference. Okay, go away. Save, and now we have the second hand. So this one's a little different because I don't have like a top face to draw on. I might actually, you see, I'm going to right click and say. Where is select other? All right, never mind. I'm trying to pick the back of that that face. I might have to hide this really quick so I can look underneath there. Let's look underneath there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna draw on this plane sketch. Okay. Do the same thing with my second hand. Convert um, all of these lines. That comes all the way up to the top here. Okay. I, I 
do want to make sure, like, see how that's not one uh, profile. I'm going to trim in between here so it is. Okay, I'm going to do an extruded boss base and pick a vertex to here this time. Yes, I want it to merge. I only want it to merge with that. Okay, there's my second hand, which on this clock is also kind of gold. So just to make it easier for me, I'm going to make it an obnoxious gold color. And let me unhide a bunch of these things. Save. Okay. We're actually, I think, pretty much done with the modeling on this guy. Um, <laughs> everything else that we need to do, I think for the most part, we can do in Illustrator, making these graphics, and then in Keyshot for the animation. So I'm going to say we're basically done with this part of the video, video part one. Um, thanks for paying attention. And uh, at the end of the next video, we should have a, a cool clock animation of a model version of this super sophisticated design icon. Um, hope this was helpful.